Hi guys, hey, it's me again. So as I always say, welcome to, or welcome back to, Cooking with Pouncy. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. If it's your first time, please, if you like what you see, hit that like button. And I would really appreciate it if you like what you see to subscribe to my channel, Cooking with Pouncy. Uh, this evening or tonight, we're going to do, we are going to do a pot of chicken and dumplings. And uh, it's 35 degrees out, and I thought, you know, that's a nice temperature to make some chili or chicken and dumpling or nice creamy heavy soup. Anyway, it's going to be chicken and dumplings tonight, okay? So again, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to be uh, dropping the camera down so you can see what uh, Pouncy is doing here with this chicken and dumpling process. I've got my onions uh, diced up here, and I'll tell you about all my ingredients for this uh, uh, chicken and dumpling. So I've got uh, a one and a half uh, onion. This is a large onion. I've got a medium dice here. I'm going to, uh, I have four sticks of celery. All of this stuff will be in the ingredient list for you guys as well, okay? So I've got four sticks of celery. I thought I'd slow down so I could show you how I'm doing it here. And just I'll take that one stick and I'll just go right down the middle with it. I didn't have to, but I wanted to, you know, I just want a medium dice on this stuff so you can see it in the dumplings. It's not all so fine. You can't see it, okay? So let me walk, let me, let's do the carrots. I bought some uh, carrot sticks. I could have bought some sliced carrots and all that stuff as well, I guess. But these are the stick carrots and I just need some carrots in there for color and flavor as well. So let's grab some of these carrots out of here. And an amount, goodly amount. I don't know where that word came from. Let's have a goodly amount of carrots here, all right? I could have had fresh whole carrots as well. Uh, but at my supermarket, I have to buy like a six pound bag of carrots. Uh, uh, and I don't want six pounds of carrots. So I uh, bought these and I'm going to just uh, dice these up consistent with the onions and celery as well, guys. Okay. And I think that's about enough. So I'm just going to put them back over here and where they belong on the cutting board here and just start dicing them up a little bit. Okay. Uh, just a little dice like that. All right. That's how we're going to do our carrots out of those sticks, out of this bag of stick carrots, all right? And obviously we've got some salt and pepper that's going to go in here. I'm going to be using some coarse ground pepper, and that salt and pepper will be to taste, as I usually say, and it'll be the specific amount that I'm putting in will be in the ingredient list for you as well. So it's a good starter for you. Watch your sodium. The, uh, excuse my sniffing, it's allergies, not a cold, guys. Um, the, watch your sodium content, guys. Uh, the uh, chicken stock I'm going to be using has salt in it. I could have been, I could have bought unsalted, I guess, but uh, that's why I'm, at, I'm saying to you, watch your sodium. I'm going to season my chicken as well with, with uh, salt and pepper. When I start braising that up, now I got little dices here, as you can see, with the uh, with the uh, carrots. All right, and let's put those in there, and we're about ready. We're ready with our vegetables. So once I get that chicken sauteed off. Or braised off. We're going to add to that chicken drippings and stock these carrots and we're going to cook these until they're translucent. And then I'm going to make, let me show you what else I've got. The stock I'm talking about, of course, stock or broth. This is broth, this is stock. I don't know what the difference is, but anyway, they have it. I'm going to be using about eight to ten cups of that stuff. I could use water, but we want some flavor. Depending on what it's going to be tasting like, guys, as I put the dish together and it starts cooking. I might even use uh, a bit of this uh, chicken base as well. Maybe, it all depends, and got, that's got salt in it too, guys. So please watch your sodium content. I only got this box here to show you I am gonna be seasoning the chicken. I, I can use sea salt, I guess, or kosher salt as well. I'll be doing that to taste. I'll be using some uh, 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 parsley flakes in my uh, dumplings, and I've already measured out my two cups of flour. I got some baking powder and some baking soda in there as well. That'll be an ingredient list for you. Uh, what else can I tell you? I've got, uh, 
I'm going to be thickening the sauce for the for the uh, for the uh, chicken and dumplings with uh, flour as I add my uh, stock to it here. But I'm going to I'll bring the uh, the camera to the range so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to be I'm going to be cooking off my uh, sautéing off my vegetables after I get done braising off my chicken, and I'll make that chicken's going to be almost done. Okay. Uh, uh, when I take it out of that pan, it'll continue to cook once I put it back in the broth and let it all simmer. I don't want to make this sound like it's complicated because it really isn't. It's simple, guys. First, I got a little some time here. I'll be putting some of that in there to taste. I've got some bay leaves. I'll put two or three bay leaves in there as well. Uh, what else can I tell you? I did say baking soda. That's in my uh, biscuit ingredient. I've got olive oil. I've got <clears throat> a tablespoon and a half of uh, olive oil is what I'm going to start my chicken with okay i think that's all i can tell you about this process it's going to come oop i forgot the buttermilk i got three quarters of a cup of buttermilk here that's going to be my liquid for my for my uh, dumplings many ways to make dumplings i think this is a great this is a great one here i've done it before and they're nice and fluffy and um anyway we're going to put this together so we can uh so i can stop talking and i can eventually eat this here yet this evening so i'll turn that's my board over here all right and then let's do that. Let's get this out of the way. And let's get the uh, chicken thighs, is what they are, uh, boned, okay? And for That's about all the damage that I can do. I'll get this out of here. I don't want to splash over on that. All right, so I'm going to do that. I've already got my tea, tablespoon and a half of olive oil in my, in my oven, Dutch oven thing here. I'm going to let that get hot once I get these done and start putting them in. Once I get them seasoned and start seasoned and start putting them in there in that hot oil, okay? I got six of these. I, I don't need that many, that many, but the more chicken, the more better. I don't know why I said that either. But here's your chicken thigh. These are already cleaned and stuff. So here they are. I'm going to leave the excess, any excess fat that's on them, that's good flavor. So I got my boning knife. Here's the bone. Each one of them's got a bone, but here's the bone. So you take your knife, and you start right at that bone. Just touch the bone with your knife. And get that piece of skin out of the way. And stay on the bone as you're doing it. As you can see there, stay on the bone, even underneath it. This is what I'm doing here. With the tip of the knife, the very tip of the knife is going underneath the bone. You'll be able to see the knife here. The knife is right there. Okay? I'm going to show you my finger. If I need the hole big enough, my finger's right there. So that's what you got to do. you got to go underneath that bone with that knife. Stay, stay as close to the bone as you can. You don't want to cut the meat off of there. And I could have been done with this if I hadn't been talking. You certainly don't cut your hand. <clears throat> hand. But that's it. That's all you got to do, all right? And again, these are going to cook a lot quicker as I, uh, as I braise these off. And I'm going to cut that little knuckle piece off because it always has a piece of gristle, uh, gristle right there. I'm taking that off, okay? I'm leaving the skin on, like I said, all right? Very simple, guys. Here's the bone again. My knife tip is right there. And I'm just going to go down, stay right on the side of the bone on both sides. Here's the other side of it. All right, underneath it again. I'm going underneath it. Knife is going to come out the other side. Watch your hands, guys. Okay, same thing here. All right. And the bone obviously will add some flavor if I left the bone in, but I don't want to do that tonight. I want to just go ahead and get this done. I'm going to be not losing that much in flavor by, by taking that bone out. It's going to give me what I want to time factor and get this, get this done, get these done, okay? So we can get this uh, chicken and dumpling process on the way here. I look like I'm reckless with that knife, guys, but I know what I'm doing. Can you tell? Don't you be trying to do it that fast because you're not used to doing it like that, all right? So again, staying underneath the bone. There's a bone right there. Just staying underneath it. Coming over here. Going to go all the way underneath it with the knife. There that knife is again. Coming out, I'm going to come up like that. Okay. And again, here's that gristle, little gristle knuckle looking piece right here. I'm going to cut that off square. All right, see, that would be flavor if I were just boiling all this stuff in a pot or something just for the stock. I don't like that ugly piece of skin right there. It's ugly. I don't know why that's, why that's ugly, but it is. Let's get rid of that, okay? And as you can see, guys, this is simple. It really is. And there's the bone again. And here we go again, right alongside of it. And the reason I say it's going to cook quicker, guys, it's going to lay flat 
I'm not going to have to worry about it cooking unevenly. I'm not going to have to worry about the, any blood or anything around, around the bone. I'm going to turn my range on. I can use this hand, guys, remember, because I haven't touched the chicken. I'll figure out which one is the first front burner here. And this one is. I got my oil in there already, as I said. So we're going to go here again with this last chicken thigh. Let's do that. All right. I bet you guys can do this. Those of you that has never done it before, it's a simple process, like I said. And again, I believe it cooks a lot faster, and it does. And um, and I don't have to. Some recipes, some recipes I've seen calls for uh, for leaving the bone in, and then taking the meat off the bone when you're done. Well, you can do that too, I guess. But this way, all I've got to do is pull that skin off, take my knife, and get it all uh, sliced up, and I'm done with it. All right, so let's. Let's go with some salt and pepper. Again, guys, I'm using this hand. I only had my hand on that knife right there, right? Cutting boards, nothing but chicken's been on there. So let's do our some pepper here. And let's do that while the oil is getting hot. This is a simple process, guys. It really is simple, guys. It's very good. So you can use the seasoning of your choice as well. You can certainly put some garlic powder, garlic salt on there. I don't recommend onion. Got a ton of onions going in the gravy, in the sauce anyway, so. All right, but but you can make yours however you want to make it. All right, I'm going to go with a little salt here now. I think I'll just use some regular iodized salt. And if you can see here, I'm going to be going back to the plate again because I've already. I want to make sure I get all of them seasoned, and that's why I go back and forth like that and make sure each one of them gets the same amount of seasoning. All right, you want that oil to get hot, and it is right behind me, as I said. It's only a tablespoon and a half. This chicken's got a lot of a lot of fat that's gonna it's, it's gonna let leach a let from it as it's cooking as well. So you don't need a whole lot of oil, which is olive oil in this case, uh, on that because chick fat's gonna come out of that chicken too, all right? Okay. We're gonna be done with this right here, this process right here. All right, and I'm not gonna bore you with the rest of this process. I'm going to Next time you see it, I'm going to be over at the range, and I'm trying to remember, make sure I remember to tell you everything I need to tell you. So, I think this is ready to add my chicken, and I'm going to be bringing my, get that on high, you want it to sear. And I'm going to be moving over to the range here in a little bit. I'll get all this cleaned up. Here we go. Here's our chicken that's already seasoned. My oil should be hot. Yeah, it's sizzling. I'm putting it in skin side down. I'm going to have to do this, these in batches as well. I've got far too much chicken, more chicken rather than I got space here. Okay, if you, it's okay if you crowd them in there too though, that's all right. Because all you want to do is get those things done, which I'm going to do here. I'm not going to overlap them. I'm going to just let them go ahead and do their thing. I think that you can certainly hear it. But uh, you'll be seeing them as well in a little bit here, okay? As they cook. And this is going to be almost real time here. Probably going to do about, I'll probably do five minutes on each side. That should give me a, a nice, oh gosh, bringing me up to about 160 or so by the time I take them out of here, okay? And then I'm going to take the skin off, like I mentioned a while ago. And I got it at about medium high, so I'll leave it there, I don't want them to burn. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just let them do it sing there. When, I, when you see this again, you'll probably see the only, excuse me, the other two, rather, that I've got uh, in the, on the platter over there, okay? And then, so I'll be done. In essence, I'll be done with the chicken. But I'm just going to brown these off, braise them off, get some nice coloring on them. I'm going to try to do that while you're watching here. Get some nice color on them. I'm going to flip them over. Another five minutes on the other side. I'm not going to hold you up with this timing thing here either. But again, maybe five, five to seven minutes on each side. Get those ready, okay? Now I'll be back with you in a little bit, and you'll see the last two. Uh, going in here at that point in time as well. I'm not going to have to cover it either. You don't want to create any liquid. You, you hear it spattering now. You put the cover on it, you're going to hear it even worse than that, okay? So we don't want to put the lid on it. We just want it to just go ahead and uh, raise those off. I'm going to come back with you for just a little bit, guys. Um, chicken's about ready here. I just temp it. It temps at about 165 right now. And that's just perfect. I'm uh, meaning it's about, it's done. Uh, as I put my other two pieces that we still have to uh, 
to breathe off here, okay? But I think you can see that color. It's got beautiful color on it. That's what we want, okay? I think I've turned them three different times, all right? That's perfect. And there's a lot of oil in there that comes from the chicken itself, which is why I only needed a tablespoon and a half of that olive oil. So we're going to take these out so they're ready. They're gonna be, they'll even cook a bit more, believe it or not. When I take them out of here, they're still cooking on the uh, platter here, waiting for their cousins to come and be uh, prepared to go in, in this marvelous chicken and dumpling as well. So here we go. And we're going to take these and we're going to put these in that hot oil now and do the same thing. All right. Boy, they smell good enough to eat right now, too, I'll tell you. And these are. Wouldn't try to eat the ones I just put in there yet, though. So, anyway. Anyway, I think this is coming together pretty good, guys. I think all in all, here's, a, here's the, uh, the finished ones here. I think all in all, if, if I did this without rambling and talking and carrying on, you could probably put this dish together. Everything that I just did, you could probably do it in an hour. Uh, that means right from boning out your chicken, if you want to do that. You don't have to use chicken uh, thighs either. You can use whatever breast if you want, whatever portions. You can leave the skin on there if you want. Um, I don't dare. My wife will yell at me if I chop the skin up and leave it, skin up and leave it in there. But anyway, you can do whatever you want to do with yours. But uh, I'm going to be peeling that skin off, and I'll be just chopping that chicken up or sh or shredding it um, to go in the uh, dumpling. And uh, I'll be doing that in a little bit. So next time, I've already started to uh, shred the other one or the other four so let's take these out they're nice and brown as well beautiful guys beautiful beautiful okay i'm going to set these aside for just a second we're going to start uh, sauteing our vegetables our carrots and onions and celery and again all the fats right in here and all the drippings that came from that chicken is in in that starter tablespoon and a half of oil is in there as well and that's sufficient amount so i'm going to now put my Kind of peering down in there, but I tell you, there's a lot of fat in there from that chicken. So let's see if I decide that it may be too much. Well, maybe not, guys. Maybe not. Maybe not. I've got quite a few vegetables in. i got to fill that pot up as well. So let's go ahead and start sauteing our vegetables in here. Let's put those guys in there. We want to make them translucent, as I said. And I... I indicated as well, uh, when you're cooking that chicken, don't cover it. When you are braising off your chicken, you, you get a water condensate from your lid, and you'll have a mess all over the place, and water down in your, whatever. So just don't, don't do it until your, your chicken gets done, just uncover it. And when you get ready to do your, uh, your uh, dumplings, obviously you're going to put a cover. I didn't have the correct cover for this, the cover that came with this Dutch oven. It won't, it doesn't, it's not like dome shape. In other words, I, and I found this one, and it, it gives me a bit of a conve convex surface where I, I can also see my dumplings as they're cooking. And it, it won't fit perfectly, but I can sit it right on top of it. Alright, I'm just kind of fussing, guys, because I'm fussy. This looks like a mirror paw, for guys' sake. So let's do this, and let's get these, uh, Nice sweat to sweat here. I'm not going to be adding anything else in here. No, no seasoning, if you will. I'll let those cook down. And again, I'm going to add my flour right to this here. And I'll be putting them, let it do its thing now. I got it on medium. And I'll just go ahead and let those get tender as I do my chicken. I think maybe, I think maybe I can't do, I can't move the camera and move it back and all that sort of stuff. I'll just let that go ahead and cook and I'll disengage with you for just a moment. I'm going to get this chicken shredded. I've got a couple of these little shredder deals I use as well. Look like claws. You can use a knife and I might wind up using a knife because it's kind of awkward, those little chicken thighs. But uh, anyway, I'm going to be using something to shred the chicken. Might even decide to dice them up if I get lazy or something, okay? But you want to shred those uh, those uh, uh, thighs after you, take your, after you take your skin off because all you want is the meat, okay? Anyway, You'll be seeing that too once it's finished. Okay guys, here we go. I'm back. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I got the skin off of the chicken and I I use uh, those little claw gizmos and I pull my chicken apart. It's in pretty good chunks here. I think you can see that, okay? I didn't dice it up real fine or nothing like that. I just kind of pulled it apart. It looks really good. This is ready to go now. I'm going to put my flour in here. 
Uh, I got about two thirds of a cup of flour. And let's just shake that in here. And we're going to cook this flour, okay? And that's what I'm going to do here. I've done it the other way too. And some of the re some recipes you might see will call for um, mixing flour and water together. Uh, something akin to a roux, but, but we're talking flour and water. But I'm going to cook this flour, which is why I'm doing it this way, okay? I'll get that on my vegetables, and then I'll pull my stock in here. Get my vegetables all coated. Let that cook, that flour cook on there. And that won't have a floury taste to it, guys, when you do that either, okay? So it's, uh, it's got enough uh, oil in there to absorb that flour. And I think I'm going to have about enough in there, too, so as not to have it too thick. I'm going to stop right there, okay? Again, it'll be an ingredient list for you. Let's, let's get this here. All mixed up here. I think you can see that. I'll tell you what was really good, guys. I, uh, as I pulled the skin off of that chicken, those of you that probably already guessed what I'm <laughs> going to say when I said that. I took that skin off of that chicken. I'm doing that chicken like this. You know, let me tell you. Can you hear that? That's some good stuff. <laughs> That's some good stuff. I'm just being silly, guys, but that is some good stuff. Just that crispy skin off that chicken. All right, so I'm getting this ready. As I said, I'm cooking it. Got to stir it like crazy so you don't want it to burn or stick. So I'm stirring it from the bottom. Madly, getting that flour cooked. And it's almost ready. You can hear me on the bottom here. So you do not want it to stick. Burn, certainly not burn, right? I'm going to come here right now with my stock or broth. I'm going to start adding that to this. Hopefully I've got just enough to uh, give me the thickness I want, along with my my liquid volume. So here we go now, with the first container of stock. I'm going to use a whole one. This is chicken stock here, salted. So again, watch your salt, guys. I have not put anything else in here. I'm going to put this whole one in there. Kick my heat up a little bit too, so it'll go ahead and do its thing and start to simmer and get as thick as it wants to get as I stir. And this one here isn't full. Again, this will all be an ingredient list for you. This is about oh, maybe half here. That one was open already. Let's just kind of put that one in there too, because I know I'm going to use that. Okay, I want that much liquid in there too. All right. That's got lots of flavor, guys. So we're going to let's let that go do its thing. When I come back with you, I'm going to be putting that chicken in there. Once it gets to the consistency I want it, the thickness I should say, I'm going to be putting my chicken in there. In the interim, I'm going to be mixing my dumpling mixture, ready to spoon my dumplings in here so we can see that process happening as well. So let's bring this to a right to the edge of a boil. And next, when next I see you, we'll be adding that chicken to it, okay? So I'll be back in a little bit, guys. Bear with me. I'm going to eat those chicken skins like I told you all ago. Okay guys, got it about the consistency I want it. You might be able to see that. A little thick, not too thick, not too runny. Okay, here's all that beautiful succulent chicken. All of it's gonna go in here, okay? And we got a chicken in there, nice big chunks of chicken. And again, that chicken will be cooking some more as it simmers in here, okay? Well, that's looking pretty good guys. I want big chunks of chicken in there. You don't want little diced up little pieces. But you'll have a piece of chicken in every bite here. I see my bay leaves floating around in there. I hope you can see that. That's looking really, really good. Really good. I put a little chicken uh, uh, base in here, a heaping teaspoon, I should say, of, um, of um, chicken base in here. And I'm going to cover this now for just a little bit and let it simmer a little bit before I put my dumplings in there, which I've mixed. That was a very simple process as well. I think I told you I got some flour, some butter, three quarters of a stick of butter, uh, three quarters of a cup of buttermilk, a uh, little salt, a half teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of pepper. It'll be an ingredient list. I'm just trying to remember what I put in it, but that's it. And I'm going to spoon some, some of that on top of this. All right, but we're going to cover this and let it simmer for a little bit. I got to stir it again because it looks so good, guys. I'm serious. Look at that. Look at that. That looks really good. It smells delicious. 
Yeah, I got some thyme in there. There's that bay leaf again. When you're cooking with bay leaves too, guys, make sure you take those bay leaves out before you serve. Don't serve your dish with your bay leaves still in there. Should every recipe, any recipe you see should tell you that. But you don't want to leave those bay leaves as a little lid, and it's not going to slide off. It almost fits perfectly. But it, again, I'm going to let that simmer for a little bit, and then I'll be dropping the dumplings in there, and they'll cook probably seven minutes, maybe eight minutes, until they get nice and dry. Okay, guys, as you can see, I got myself a nice rolling boil here. It's been about seven minutes, and um, I think you can see that. Let me take that off. Yes, nice. There you have it. It's got a nice little rolling ball going there. The chicken's nice and tender. Ready to drop those dumplings in there. I got a really nice consistency here. As you can, I hope you can see that. I think you can. Really nice. And it smells really, really good, guys. So I've got those uh, dumplings all mixed up, and I hope they turn out okay. I was kind of ad-libbing when I put those together, but they're pretty simple. So let's do that. Let's turn our heat down just a little bit. I don't want them, I don't want it boiling and splashing back at me as I'm trying to drop those things in here. So let's do that. And let's go, I'm just going to grab a spoon, a couple of spoons here and put a couple of heaping spoons right on top here. Let's see how we do that. As you can see that, I've just got a, another, another one here, heaping spoonful here. Let's just drop that one right here. Okay. Another one. Just a heaping spoon. Here goes another one. Mm -mm. I'm telling you, I should stop the dumpling process right now and just start eating it. I can press it together a little bit. They look like a bit dry, but I think they're going to be okay. There's another one. Mm -hmm. Kind of forming them up a little bit as I drop them in there. They're kind of ragged looking, but hey, they're going to be fine, okay? There's another one. I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five. I think I can get another. Three out of this batch, I hope. There we go again. Okay. Okay. All right. It's a nice meal for this kind of weather, too, guys. I'm telling you, it's just cool, man. Pretty chilly out there tonight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got another. I got eight of them here. That's great, I think. Our last one, guys, there. That's going to go right there, all right? Now we're going to let it simmer. We're going to cover it. Where's my lid? And again, I got this this glass lid so I can actually see what's going on here. Now that's kind of cool too. I'm going to I'm going to guess it's going to take me probably seven minutes, eight minutes of cooking time on those dumplings. And next time you see this, I'll have it over at the counter. I'll move the camera so you can see that process and I'll plate up one of them as well. Let me turn down just a little bit more then. We just want, want it to simmer seven or eight minutes maybe. And I think we'll be done with this process. So. Guys, I thought I'd uh, give you a gander of what it looks like at this point. See, see how you can see through the lid, I think. And they are looking really, really good. I did, I set my timer for 11 minutes, 10 minutes or so. I saw that my dumplings were getting really big. I, I want that um, as well. But I also want them to cook on the inside as, they, as large as they are. Kind of add living with it here, but I think that's going to be just fine. Anyway, I set it for 10 minutes, I believe. And if it needs any more time, I'll, of course, leave them in there for a little bit longer. But I'll be testing one of these here in about, and I said seven earlier, but these are pretty big. They've swollen up, <laughs> which is good. They look really good. I hope you can see that. Let me, uh, let me take the cover off for just a little bit here. I don't think I'm going to wreck anything by doing that. Oh, that looks good. That looks really good. Mm. They look good. My goodness, guys. That's all I can say is my goodness. Okay, guys. This is ready. So I gave the uh, dumplings, oh my gosh, look at that. I gave the dumplings uh, 12 minutes. And uh, I've got, right now I, I put my my dish in the oven, which is what I normally do. You should do if you think about it. So I'm getting my uh, my dish that I'm gonna put, uh, plate this up in, uh, in the oven, I'm getting it hot. I got the oven set at about 175 or so. Um, so it'll be nice and hot when I put my uh, Chicken, chicken. We used to call it chicken stew and dumplings. I think you can still call it that. But anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to be moving this to the counter so you can see me plating it up. Um, we're ready to plate this up, 
As I said, my plates go in the oven so they can get nice and hot. As I serve this delectable dish, there's a bay leaf that I told you about taking out. And please take your bay leaves out before you serve your dish, okay? Uh, all right, so I, I removed the bay leaf. I think there's one more floating around there somewhere. Well, let's just go ahead and plate this up. My goodness, it looks good. It really looks good, guys. Really, really looks good. I was going to use my ladle, actually. Let's just do that. Those dumplings really look good. Just the right consistency here, too, guys. A lot of that nice chicken minus the uh, skin. I know you guys knew I was going to say that. Mmm, mmm, mmm. All right, that's about all I'm going to put in there. I'm going to put one of these beautiful dumplings in there. How about this guy right here? i put that right in the center. That's that one, okay? Well, it looks pretty good, guys. I'm telling you right now, it looks pretty good. And being the fanatic I am, i got to get that off of there, all right? All right, it looks, it looks good. And we'll sprinkle a little parsley on top of that. My, that smells so good, I could eat it right now. Stop talking and eat it. Let's sprinkle just a little bit of parsley on top of that. I think you can still see what I'm doing here. Just got a little bit of a dusting of parsley on the top. Put a little something green on there. Mm-hmm. Looks good. Yeah, see if I can show that to you a little bit. It looks really, really good, guys. And it smells absolutely delicious. So, and again, I hope uh, you uh, make this for yourself if you decide to do so. And cooking with Pouncy. The dish turned out really, really well. It's very, very good, very tasty. Again, if you like what you see, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you have a mind to. I would really appreciate that, guys. And uh, we're going to enjoy this dinner. I should say me. My wife's not going to eat this tonight. I'm probably going to eat the whole thing myself. Just kidding. So I'll see you next time, guys. Thank you so much once again for tuning in. And, and uh, hit that like button, if you will, please. And these things come up every Thursday if you want to follow me on my channel. I, again, would really appreciate that, guys. So thanks again, and good night. We'll see you next time. Bye now.